Imagine flying a helicopter so experimental that pieces of it might fly off in midair. A machine so strange looking that it earned the nickname the Flying Banana. And yet, it paved the way for some of the most important military helicopters in history. We're diving into the story of the Piasecki HRP Rescuer, the first successful tandem rotor military transport helicopter, a design that would eventually lead to the mighty Chinook. Welcome back to This Week in Aviation History right here on Aero Exploration. Today, we're going to be exploring the fascinating story behind the Piasecki HRP Rescuer, commonly known as the Flying Banana. This quirky yet groundbreaking helicopter was the first U.S. military helicopter developed under a contract and the world's first practical tandem rotor helicopter. But it wasn't just its unique design that made it stand out. It's the challenges, the triumphs, and the legacy that it left behind. So before this innovative design became the backbone of military aviation, it was plagued with some problems. Mechanical failures, skepticism, and fabric-covered fuselage that sometimes ripped off in flight. So how to go from an experimental oddity to influencing helicopters that are still in service today? Our story begins with a visionary named Frank Piasecki, born on October 24, 1919. Piasecki had a passion for aviation and engineering from a young age. Their first design, the PB-2, was a single-seat, single-rotor helicopter powered by a 90-horsepower Franklin engine. The humble beginnings would soon lead to something much bigger. So in 1943, while the world is at war, the U.S. military is looking for new ways to move troops and equipment. Frank Piasecki had a radical idea. Instead of a single main rotor, why not use two? One in the front and one in the back. More lift, better stability, and it gives bigger payload capacity. Simple, right? Not exactly. So Piasecki pitches this idea to the Navy in 1944. And somehow, despite being the underdog, he won a development contract. The tandem rotor configuration was chosen because it gave some fairly generous center of gravity margins, which is important when you're carrying bulk loads. Some weren't as enthusiastic about the idea of the tandem configuration. They thought that the downwash of the forward rotor while in flight would cause some destabilization of the rear rotor and a subsequent loss of control. But through testing, they determined that they could avoid this interference by putting the rear rotor in a slightly higher plane, thus creating the bent design the Navy was impressed with Piasecki's innovative design and ordered two prototypes, designated the XHRP-1. The first of these was known internally as the dog ship and served as a test bed for the new technology. But before it could prove itself in service, this first prototype had to fly. And that was a challenge. So that brings us to March 7, 1945. This prototype helicopter took to the skies in Morton Grove, Pennsylvania. At the time, the prototype was the world's largest helicopter, with the tandem rotors designed to carry a significant payload. It was constructed of steel tubing, filled out with wooden rib sections and covered in fabric. The design was groundbreaking, but the execution? Not so much. This helicopter suffered constant breakdowns. One of the most significant problems was the use of common automotive parts in the helicopter's transmission. This would cause these transmission gears to be stripped out mid-flight. Clearly a problem. Engine mounts would break, and let's talk about that fabric-covered fuselage. It had this little habit of tearing away at a flight, sometimes getting caught in the rotors. Certainly not ideal when you're trying to stay airborne. Engineers had to use trial and error to correct these issues. But these early setbacks were part of the journey to creating a revolutionary helicopter. Despite these terrifying early failures, Piasecki's team pressed on strengthening key components and tweaking their design. By 1947, the HRP-1 was ready for its first official flight, and while it still looked unconventional, it was finally a functional aircraft. With a 600-horsepower Pratt & Whitney engine and a unique bent fuselage, the HRP-1 could carry two crew members, 
and up to 10 passengers or 2,000 pounds of cargo. It became a vital asset for the U.S. military. The HRP-1 entered service with the U.S. Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. And despite all of its quirks, it proved that the helicopter could be a game changer for transport and rescue missions. The Marine Corps used it in some of the first helicopter assault exercises, testing how troops could quickly move from ship to shore. But while the HRP-1 was a step forward, it was far from perfect. The limited power of their Pratt & Whitney engines, combined with its lightweight construction, meant it couldn't carry as much as the modern helicopters we see today. But still, it laid the foundation for something much bigger. Over time, Piasecki's design would evolve. The HRP-1 led to the H-21 Flying Banana, which saw heavy use in Korea and Vietnam. And from there, the concept continued to improve, eventually leading to an iconic aircraft in the Boeing CH-47 Chinook, which is still in active military service today. The Chinook remains a vital part of military operations worldwide. And it all started with a quirky fabric-covered prototype that people weren't sure would even work. So where can you see an HRP-1 today? Two of them are in storage at the American Helicopter Museum in Pennsylvania, and another is under restoration at the Classic Rotor Museum in California. If you ever get the chance to see one, take a moment and appreciate how this flying banana changed aviation forever. So what do you think? Was the HRP-1 ahead of its time or just an experimental oddity? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation history, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories of incredible aircraft and aviation history.